Uh, so Fazbear Fright's book number eight has a cover now. Don't know what the hell's wrong with it. Is it too late to ask Scott if he is doing okay? Because I think it might be. This this has got to be one of the most creepiest covers we've gotten so far. I have no words. I was at dinner, I came back home, and I saw this on Twitter. And I was like, what the absolute heck is this thing? This is one of the most, like, creepiest and strangest creatures we've ever gotten across the entire book franchise. Gumdrop Angel? What is- Okay, well, let's take this step by step. You all know what to do. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's hop right into it. Okay, yeah, so today on October the 6th, the cover for the next Fazbear Fright books, book number 8, was revealed with this cover. And the title is Gumdrop Angel. God, where do I even start with this thing? We all know that the books have become a lot creepier <laughs> and a lot more graphic and gruesome over the past like maybe year that they've been out when did the first one come out when did into the pit come out i don't freaking know but it's been a while you know we're already on book number well book number five was the latest one that we have but we already have the cover for book number eight and as far as we know there's so far nine books and we'll get to book number nine and we'll quickly do a recap of the seventh book but first you know i want to focus on what the heck this book is now, this, again, is one of the strangest creatures? I don't even know what to freaking call this thing. Is it a human? Because it has, you know, a human-like appearance. It has hair, it has eyes, it's got a nose, it's got a mouth, it's got a body. But it's also, like, a candy monster, you know, a gumdrop creature. So I don't really know what to call this thing, but I do have a theory. One that I think, um, will, will work pretty well. I think it's a pretty good theory about not only what this character is, but also what role they're going to play in their specific story. So yeah, uh, going over it again, as you can tell, this is the Gumdrop Angel. We don't know a whole lot about them besides their appearance. Uh, you know, all we know is that they will be in the first story. We do have the summary for this book, so I'll go over it uh, quickly right now. A string of bad luck you can't seem to shake for Angel, Hudson, and Sergio. And yes, for the love of God, I know I'm pronouncing Sergio wrong, but frankly, I don't care, I'm too lazy to look up how to pronounce it, so deal with it. <laughs> uh, it's an all too familiar feeling. Repulsed by her spoiled stepsister's lavish birthday party, Angel exacts a hasty and ill-fated revenge. Hudson's young life is littered with tragedy and broken dreams, but a well-paying security job might just be all he needs to turn things around. Sergio acquires a unique novelty toy that instantly brings good luck. But is the toy really leading him to happiness or to a more monstrous end? In this 8th volume, FNAF creator Scott Cawthon spins three sinister novella-length stories from different corners of his series' canon. Featuring cover art from fan-favorite artist Lazy Fizzy, readers beware, this collection of terrifying tales is enough to unsettle even the most hardened FNAF fans. Okay, so... As we all know, we've been through this at least eight times, we all know that the cover of the book and the title of the book are always, always of the first story. You know, Into the Pit, the first story was Into the Pit, 1.35am, the first story of that was 1.35am. Even though one of the books changed, I can't remember which one, it might actually have been 1.35am, where the original cover and title was going to originally be for Room for One More, but for some reason, we don't really know why they switched it. In fact, that very recently happened with the seventh book um, called The Cliffs. Originally, it was going to be called The Breaking Wheel. I go into it more in depth in a, um, in a, in a earlier, I was going to say later, in a earlier video, um, and that will be linked down below in case you missed it. So yeah, I have a pretty good feeling about what I think this character is. So the first story, as we all know, is going to be about Angel. Now, what is interesting about that name. Well, the title for the book is called The Gumdrop Angel. Interesting how Scott did that. Now, Angel is both a name and an actual angel, you know, the one with like the halo and the white wings. So my guess is that Angel, the, you know, the name of this human, is going to be turned into this gumdrop angel, you know, not the name, an actual angel, again, with the halo and the wings, and you get it. How? this is going to happen? I don't fully know. Um, I'm guessing, uh, it says repulsed by her spoiled, spoiled stepsister's lavish birthday party. So my guess is, 
Um, and then Angel exacts a hasty and ill-fated revenge. My guess is Angel um, wants to try and sabotage her stepsister's birthday party because, you know, she's salty. She thinks that her stepsister is spoiled. It even says, you know, like a lavish birthday party. Clearly, Angel is jealous. Jealous? Um, and so my guess is her hasty and ill-fated revenge is maybe like pouring a whole bunch of candy onto the stepsister, but it goes wrong and it actually happens to her and then she t turns into this gumdrop angel. That is my guess. Because the books like to punish the, um, not, 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 not quite the mean ones, but you know what I mean. The type of characters that you don't really like per se, you know, it's usually the, um, the aggressive ones that get some sort of punishment, whether it be uh, being transfor transformed into a plush Freddy or being pregnant with Springtrap. My guess is, you know, whatever force does this to Angel, they clearly want her to be punished and not the stepsister who may not be all that bad. You know, maybe Angel thinks that the stepsister is spoiled and, you know, she gets this lavish birthday party when Angel's just kind of left on their own. So yeah, I'm guessing that Angel is going to be turned into this gumdrop angel. This is the first time that I feel pretty good about a theory on one of these books. Um, and then Hudson and Sergio, I don't know what's gonna happen with them. We've speculated about them in the past. Hudson, you know, their life is littered with tragedy and broken dreams, but then they get a security job. So again, very closely linked with the actual FNAF games we're used to, where you work as a security guard. Um, seems like it could be referencing Michael or the older brother or whoever the frick you want to <laughs> assume Michael is, you know, where their whole life is like, dang, you know, my sister's dead, my mom's gone, my brother's frontal lobe is missing, my dad is building killer animatronics, but I found a security job. It seems like that's going to be paralleled to the Afton family, which, I don't know, it feels like we've gotten a lot of parallels between characters in the books and the Afton family, so personally, I would like something a bit different. It also seems like this is going to be um, close to Room for One More, where that was also about a um, security guard who got, you know, spoilers coming up, who got the Minorinas inside their body, like crawling all over their skin, inside their skin, and then they like came out of their mouth. Ah, oh, it's disgusting. These books are creepy as heck, dude. And then Sergio uh, acquires a novelty toy. Again, there's been a lot of toys in the book, so I don't know really why, <laughs> and I don't mean to sound mean here, but like, nine books, that's a lot of books, you know, that is three times more than the original trilogy of books. It's a lot of books, so clearly, Scott has to come up with ideas somehow, so it seems like these are getting pretty similar, which, although I love the Fazbear Fright books, you know, I love, um, all the theories that people come up with them, you know, like MatPad, Ozone, um, and Underscore recently had a theory, theory live stream that was so fun to listen to. I don't want them to become, um, I don't want them to be repetitive. I feel like, honestly, now would be a good time to end them soon. I feel like 10 books is a pretty nice number to end on, so as much as I would love to keep reading them, it's getting too, <laughs> it's getting too much, man. Scott, calm down. You're literally driving yourself crazy and you're making creatures like this. What are you doing? Yeah, so uh, that's basically my theory on the book. Uh, quick recap for the cliffs. Some things must be learned the hard way. Reed sees an opportunity to teach the school bully not to mess with him, but ends up mangling the lesson. Robert, an exhausted single father, gets a crash course in parenting when he buys a fancy new teddy bear to watch and entertain his young son. And Chris, eager to join the science club at school, agrees to undergo a grisly experiment to be accepted. But in the malevolent universe of FNAF, there's always an education in pain. And then this is the cover, um, depicting what appears to be a plush Freddy, uh, with a speaker on their stomach. Seems very, um, familiar to people who may have read, uh, Lonely Freddy. Whether this is Lonely Freddy, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, maybe it's like a sequel thing because, you know, cliffs, cliffhanger, I don't freaking know. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't read, um, what's it called? Uh, Lonely Freddy yet, so I don't know if it left off on a cliffhanger, but it seems like, again, it's getting very, um, familiar with past stories, so again, I 
I hope Scott doesn't milk this thing dry because again, I love the books, but I don't want them to be too repetitive. So the ninth book does not have a summary, but I should go over release dates because I forgot to mention that. The eighth book comes out on May 4th, 2021, and then the, the ninth book comes out on July 6th. 2021 so a little bit to wait not gonna lie um but then we also have like what three other books two other books two because six seven two, two other books uh before those book number six blackbird we've talked about that in a previous episode that comes out on december 29th so that's actually pretty close you know we're only like what two months away actually never mind it's more like three months because we're only on october 6th and then the seventh book the cliffs which is the one we just talked about uh, comes out on March the 2nd. So a lot of stuff to look forward to uh, if you're a fan of the Fazbear Fight books. So yeah, that's really it. Uh, I'm guessing we can expect a cover for the... Uh, what are we on now? Nine? Jesus. <laughs> I'm guessing we can expect a cover for that one maybe next month, maybe even late this month. I don't know. It seems like we're getting these covers pretty quickly, which is very nice actually. Number nine is also missing a description as well as the cover, so I'm guessing we can probably get the description before the cover. If they come out at the same time, that'd be amazing. But for right now, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye. Gregory, be still. I think she's found us. <laughs>